Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you a quick video of how to install and get rewired working in your project. Now, rewired might be something that you do use, you've heard of, or you might never have seen before. And it is a paid asset, but it's one of those ones that replaces the input system for Unity. And the input system in Unity has been pretty bad for a long time. There's not an awful lot of good features to it, and it's been the same since the very early days of many, 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 many years ago. And rewired is one of those assets which helps you do input for all types of uh, input devices whether it be controllers mouse keyboard um, guitars uh, phones i don't know absolutely any controller that you can imagine they usually have support for and it lets you um, use it for cross-platform have vibrations it's got a nice little ui to be able to set up all the actions that you have all the actual things that you can share between different joypads or mouse and keyboard so it's great so I was just going to show how to set it up because it's something that I really like using in all my projects that I have. So if it's something for you, you can check this out. So when you've got rewired, you can just import it as you would normally any asset from the asset store. You can click import and import it into, it's supported in all different versions of Unity. So it's great in that regard. Okay, so when you're actually in... I'll put this down here so you can maybe see it a little bit better. So when you actually get rewired that opens up, you... I'll get asked on a little pop-up, do you want to proceed with the installation? And you want to do this because it's easier to than doing it manually. So you just say, yeah, proceed. And you want to carry on with the installation. And then when we're here, it'll ask you to, that it wants to add entries to replace the current input manager with the ones from Rewired. So you want to add the settings to your project. And then it will add Control Mapper, which is a customizable sort of Unity UI based Control Mapper. So if you choose to want to let people remap controls in your game, you can install this too. So you can either choose to skip or install it. I'd probably say you can install it now, but you can choose to install it later if you want. But I'd just put it in now because it isn't a big thing. This then it asks you if you want to include a pack of on-screen touch controls. And if that's something you want to use for your game, then you can install it. But for me, I'll just skip it. Then you can choose to install the documentation, which is you might as well install because you'll probably want to look through the documentation if you choose to set up or do anything from there. <clears throat> and then it will want it'll ask you if you want to open the documentation. So why not open it? You'll get the documentation like so, and then uh, you will see it, and it's got the whole host of things that will tell you exactly what you need to do and all the behaviors, and you can search for the things that you might be struggling with. Now, what I like to do is click on the quick start and you get the quick start options and it gives you a guide to run through it. But I'm gonna run through for you so we can sort of do it together as we're going through. So I'm in my scene now with everything and I'm ready to actually start doing something. So we need to actually add the input manager to our scene. So it needs to be added to our hierarchy so we can actually use the functionality. So what we can do is we can go window, then there'll be option for rewired. We can say, go to create and then we can choose the input manager in the scene <clears throat> now once that's there we'll get an input manager which is added to our scene as an object and you can select that in your hierarchy and you can choose to click and you will launch the actual editor so once we've launched the editor you might think oh my god what's going on here because there's a load of stuff that you can do but it's fairly straightforward once you get to know what you're doing so you want to navigate to players and you want to create a set of players for realistically how many players you would have in your game. So if in this instance you have one player and it's a single player game, you can just click the button at the bottom for new and you'll see that I've created player zero. And player zero, obviously most times in programming, it starts at zero. So player zero, that's absolutely fine. We've created something there. And now we want to click on the actions tab because we're going to cover a list of actions. You can create your own categories so you could categorize them by player movement or uh, player shooting or player or, or flight or something. If you're going to have different actions for different types of functionality in your game. But for this, we'll keep the category at default and we're just going to add some really basic um, actions that are to do with my little rolling ball game here. So what we can do is on this side for actions, we can just press new and we get a basic action. So an action can be categorized as a button or an axis because most of the time it's gonna be like your keyboard, it's gonna be mostly buttons and an axis is gonna be when you move your player or it could be a joystick or something like that. Now what you can do is you can give it a name and a descriptive name 
and these are just what you're going to give it when you reference it within your code. So you want to be something that you can actually understand. So for this one, I might call it move horizontal and you can copy that into both um, things into the name and the descriptive name because it, it makes sense to move horizontal. That's what you want to do. You move left and right. So of course, because we're moving left and right, it's not a button, it's an axis. So we want a positive and a negative name. So what are the sort of things that we do? We would move right and move left. So that's that setup. So we're moving horizontal in an axis of left and right and then new. Again, we can select another action. We can call this one move vertical. You can obviously call this whatever you want. Copy that, paste that in there, another axis. And then what do you expect is going to be move up and move down because they're the two types of things that we're going to do. Then we could create another one as an example and does a button and we'll call this jump because that's what my ball does. Now that's a button. It can be left as default. Now we've got that set up. So we're going to move left and right. We're going to move up and down and we're going to be able to jump because they're all different actions in itself. And you can obviously add as many as you want. You can add shooting, uh, you could have different button presses for picking things up, whatever it needs to be. All the actions are tied to an input behavior and control how the keyboard keys, buttons and mouse axes behave. By default, it's all got basic sort of parameters that you would have found in the input manager in Unity. So you can change the joystick sensitivity by default or the mouse sensitivity. You can choose other sensitivities, what the speeds are of button presses and button repeats and dead zones. So these are something that you can edit if you choose to, but the default settings are fairly good and accurate. Then what we want to do is say we're going to incorporate, I'm going to show you how to specifically incorporate a joystick and I'll briefly show you how to do what you can do, you control it and your mouse. So for a joystick, you go over to the joystick maps tab and you can use anything here, all the different types of joysticks that are supported, an absolute crazy amount. Look at, look at that. Really crazy, 163 different <laughs> the uh, actual inputs that you can have. Now, the basic one is the gamepad template and the gamepad template will be specific for any gamepad, whether you use a PlayStation 4 controller, Xbox 360 controller, an Xbox One controller, whatever it may be, it will allow you to just have a basic layout which will for conform to a basic style. So what we can do is when we're here, we've got the default layout and category, we can just click create map and we've got a map created here. So we want to be able to actually create some elements within that. So this is almost like the different buttons that you have on the controller. You need to give them actions and for it to understand, right? Okay. So if I press, let's say a on the, or the X on an Xbox or PlayStation controller, you, what, what do I do with that? You know, what, what am I going to do when I press that button? So as an example, we can press new and it's undefined at the moment. So we can choose an element. So you can see it has the elements listed on exactly what a controller would be. And it's got different names for the buttons. So action, bottom row, one. You can find an actual template of what all these mean on in the rewired documentation. And if you can't find it and want it, I could always post it in the description. And what you can do is now you're going to define what you want each of your actions to do or each of the buttons do and give it an action. So for this one, especially specifically, we're going to use the left stick and we want to use the left stick in the X axis for left and right. So we'll choose left stick and we'll choose the X axis and then we'll choose move horizontal because it's going to be in the X axis of the left stick. When we move left and right, we're going to move left and right. And again, we'll add new and it's undefined at the moment. We'll scroll down and we'll choose left stick y so when we're y we expect to go up and down so we'll choose move vertical and then what we also want to do is add a new one and we can call this action button i think it's action bottom row one which is like x or a on the corresponding playstation or xbox controllers and then we're going to want to jump because that's what we're going to want to do now we can do something similar on the keyboard maps we can click create and a new and we can add a new set of functionality. So what we can say is we can say that we want the W key. So we want the W key, the A key, but make sure you select on each of these um, elements or you will accidentally edit the other one, S and D. And then we could have one for jump, which the space bar. So what you would do in these cases, 
So you can have as W, you're going to have move vertical. So for move up, A is going to be move left. So it's going to be horizontal. S is move vertical. And D, move horizontal. And space is going to be jump. So what we could say here, W is fine. That's move up. A was left. So we want to say that the axis contribution is going to be negative. So we can say move left. S is down essentially it's got move up but that's got the positive we want the negative to move down and d e is going to be the same move right and space is jump similar with mouse maps we can do exactly the same but i've not got anything here but i can create a map and add something new if i really wanted so that's pretty much straightforward and that allows you to have encompass as many different actions for as many different controllers and different layouts as possible and you only have to reference these actual names of the actual actions that you're going to do so it doesn't matter how many you have you're always going to specify a particular set of actions so like i said you can do that and then what we want to do is we want to go back to our player that we created and we need to add, assign a joystick map to that player so it's added by automatic it's added joystick map one and then what we could do is we could go to keyboard maps and add the keyboard map to it as well and similarly if we had a keyboard map we can um, a mouse map we can add that to there but now we've got a map assigned to our player and a keyboard map assigned to our player with what we just created and now it's all set up it looked like a bit of a long-winded way but realistically it's just once you've got this groundwork set you can easily 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 just go into your action add a new action which might be interact with an object with a button and then you will go to your um, controller map choose which other button that you'll want and assign that and literally away you go you're actually running and you just set up an action so easily and you've got that across any different controller that you choose to plug in so we can close that for now and make sure you save your scene now one thing that you want to do is you want to be able to integrate this within your actual scene and player that you've got so i will show you and give you an example so with my input normally with unity i've got i float for move horizontal and vertical and i get the input um, of get access within unity's normal input manager and i do the same with jump i detect a key and we just do some jumping now we want to reference rewired to do this and it's in a very similar but in a slightly slightly different way so at the top we want to be able to use using we want to say rewired and that's all and good we're almost ready to go but for rewired you need to be able to reference the actual component that has been added to your scene so therefore you need to make a reference to it so what we can do is we can add two killer brackets in serialized field and i'm adding this to a an actual already existing script and we can say private integer and we can call this player id and we can set that equal to zero because the current ID that we're going to set is zero because that was what it was called. It was the zero for first player, essentially. And we can do something similar. We can say a serialized field in square brackets and say private player and as type. And we give it a name of player because player is going to be the thing in the rewired class which tells us that yeah that's exactly what we're going to access now what we can do is in the say the start method which we're going to do first we'll say that player equals re input dot players dot get player and then in brackets we'll say player id with a semicolon so what this means is we're filling that actual player variable with the input and the players and it gets the player id that we're specifying you can specify this in the inspector if you really wanted if you had multiple players but because this it starts at zero we're specifying that we want the first player which we created which starts at zero now that's all really good we're almost ready to go we just need to edit our movement to be able to incorporate what we're exactly going to do so what i'll do is i'll copy my input lines here and it's very very similar so what we've got is we'll have the floor for move horizontal and vertical but instead of input dot get access we reference it in a slightly different way we choose and to put in player because we specified the variable up here of player and we filled player with the actual id so we just want to write in player there and we can get rid of the other two 
and we'll say player.getAccess but remember what we named the actions was what we should put in our box so in the quotes we want to say move horizontal and move vertical because that's exactly what we specified for the action and similar with jump all you need to do is instead of having the input you want to use player dot but you want to use something called get button down for this one and you don't want to specify key code space we specify the word that we gave it just like above and we call this jump and two in quotes with two brackets on the end and then we've got our jump so there we go we should be ready to go you can save that out go back into unity again you can't see that i've got a controller here but i have got one believe please believe me and um what i'll do is i'll press start so when i'm playing the game now you can see that my ball is literally just there and if i use the wasd keys you can hear me pressing them and be able to move this around just like so i can press space to jump great that's great now if i pick up my controller now let's hope that it works you can hear this now if i uh, just hit the um triggers there you go now i'm using the left analog stick you can hear it there and i'm moving it around and you see i can use x to jump something like that and you can see i'm able to move it around with the left analog stick and move it around the world just as you would expect so there you go and what you want to do is if you ever want to um, edit the input manager you can create this into a prefab and make sure you edit the prefab because it exists across multiple scenes if you specify and it allows you to just add really nice <laughs> inputs across all scenes all devices really easily so hopefully this helped you get started with rewired and being able to set it up so thanks very much for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe cheers